Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your sun in Cancer and your moon in Sagittarius. And I just did the opposite with the sun in Sag and the moon in Cancer. Both of these were requested and yet they're not going to be the same uh, type of video because the things that are going on are not interchangeable. Because the sun is a different influence than the moon. And the sun is on top. As far as I'm concerned, it's the center of everything. Now, if you're a Cancer, your ruler is the moon. So I might make a slight exception for you that the moon is important to you because it is your ruler. But um, still, the sun is central to everything. And the sun is a masculine energy, so it is your shining, your light, your talents onto the world. And that means your individual talents. The sun is the individual. The moon is the emotional nature, the reactions that we have. But the sun is the individual and so this is why it is so central to our astrological profile. And so the cancer energy is very emphasized in that case. Cancer is a cardinal water sign, and um, it's ruled by the moon, as I stated earlier. Cancer being a water sign is leading by the emotions and cancer has a bunch of them <laughs> that they uh, display on a, on a regular early and often as you well know and um, this can be wonderful if you are a parent because it just comes naturally natural for you to nurture your children and to want to um, take care of people and other living creatures. And so um, that's good for certain professions like the medical profession. Nursing is a big one. Nur Notice how nurture and nursing is the same, the same phoneme. So um, that, that has a great side to it. And people can sense that you're caring and that you're sensitive, not only about yourself, but about others. But um, on the flip side, the strange thing about cancer that I have observed is that there's an aggressive side to cancer. And I think it's because of having, being a cardinal sign, because um, all cardinal signs, and they represent each element. So we have cancer for the water, Capricorn for the earth, Libra for the air, and Aries for the fire. They are self-starters. They are the doers of the zodiac. And you can count on cardinal signs to take action and to initiate things. And, you know, they represent the four seasons. So that's where that, you know, action-oriented um, part, part comes into it. And that has, you know, that's good because um, people who are all talk and no action don't get anything done, right? So um, there's like an aggressive quality, but there's also this manipulative quality when a cancer person is not well balanced or they are immature. Immature does not mean under the age of blankety blank. It means that the person is undeveloped and they could be like 60 years old and be immature. So, um, and they could be 10 years old and be very immature. The point is, is that a cancer person has to choose, um, to express their emotions, but not use emotions as a weapon. 
not use their sadness or their whatever, their disappointment as something that they hold over somebody else's head and, you know, try to get their needs met. Because cancer being a water sign is going to, um, all water signs are going to want other people to, um, fill them up emotionally if they haven't gotten to the spiritual um, attainment where they do that for themselves. And it's not this great thing. I mean, you don't have to be like a yogi, you know, like an advanced yogi to do that. It really doesn't take that much effort, but it takes understanding. And this comes through time and sometimes, you know, trial and error of realizing that that is the only way, because I think all of us as human beings can fall prey to the illusion that somebody else is responsible for our happiness and that is uh, capable of giving us our happiness um, by loving us enough. And it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. Um, it can't come from the top down or the outside in. Happiness is an inside job. Love is self love is an inside job. That's why it's called self love. And any other outside type of love is a lot of times a projection from other people of their ideal idealization of who you are. And you know, I'm I know that sounds kind of cynical, and I don't mean it that way because. I think um, I think love is beautiful, and I think it exists. But I think that it is overrated um, to have it because it's, there's, all, there's usually a distortion. So uh, the point being that sometimes people feel bad because they don't have a relationship and they feel unlovable um, because of that. And that is one of the things that society kind of promotes in um, subtle ways like, you know, Hollywood movies and just, just anything. It could be just a schmaltzy commercial or something. So the point is, is that you have to understand that these things are illusions and that takes uh, time to do so. But a lot of people don't want to give up that illusion. They want to believe in a savior and, um, and that's something that I think uh, this combination is not, is, uh, ready to transcend that because with the moon in, in Sagittarius, you are going to be more emotionally independent, um, actually to the point of being a little bit ambivalent about relationships because the moon is how you love and you may feel uncomfortable about deep relationships because it might seem like there's some kind of um, loss there, like a loss of freedom. Sagittarius is all about freedom. And so in the emotional terrain, it's going to be in that area that you feel that sense of loss of freedom. So I think that that will be where you experience that ambivalence the most is in relation in close relationships. And even like um, I had mentioned in the opposite video, the idea of having children. And I, and I mentioned this with this, the person who has a son in Sagittarius, because that can be so front and center, that idea of freedom for a cancer person. It is natural for them to want that kind of family life and things like that. But emotionally, because freedom is so important to them, there may be this fear that um, having children will tie you down to 
a partner that you may not, you know, it not just necessarily the children, but other like kind of um, other relationships or who's going to take care of the children all the time. I'm going to be there 24 seven, but what about my parents? I don't necessarily get along with them and all those things that can come up that are complications. So I guess in a way there's a similar fear going on with both versions of this configurations of this. Um, but I think that with cancer, there's more of a willingness when the sun is in cancer, because that the sun is kind of like how you view yourself, your identity. And that just comes natural, um, naturally to a cancer. There's a, the cancer is the mother. And even if you're a man, <laughs> you can be motherly as a man because it's nurturing. I do think that this combination can produce cancers that blow hot and cold because of that need for freedom uh, with that moon sign. And that can lead to uh, inconsistent or contradictory behavior within relationships that leave the other person puzzled and maybe even leave yourself puzzled and a little bit um, frustrated that you have that side to yourself. Um, maybe you suddenly break off a relationship. Maybe you like veer between being very um, almost like codependent and then totally like indifferent. I don't know. Sag isn't like a ghosting type of a sign, like I would say Aquarius is or something like that. But um, I still think that something like that could occur because you just don't want to get involved in messy emotional scenes. But I was just thinking about atypical cancer kinds of people. And I think about somebody like Deborah Harry, and I should have looked up what her moon sign is because she just seems like a very quirky person and she's a son in uh, cancer and she never had children. And, um, I actually just looked her up and nope, I'm wrong. I, I thought that she might have something like Sag moon, but she actually has Pisces moon and Scorpio rising. So she's a triple water sign. But the reason that I brought up somebody like her is that she's atypical. She never had children. And, um, the other person I was thinking of is, uh, Frida Kalo. I don't know if you pronounce her last name that way. The Mexican painter who, um, I don't know when she died, maybe in the forties or fifties, but she was a, a cancer sun sign and she just seems like, and she didn't have children either. And she just seems like a very, um, atypical cancer female. So the bottom line is that um, you may not feel sometimes like a cancer. There may be a, a bolder um, personality with this combination because um, I was saying that I think cancers can be aggressive, but I think that some of that is almost like um, a timidity that has been weaponized <laughs> in some way. I mean, that's how I really look at it because there's, there's a lot of hypersensitivity with cancer that sometimes gets uh, masqueraded as um, something else. And I've noticed that cancers can be quite... Um, you know, they can tease people themselves and they don't, they can't stand being teased, but they can dish it out. And so with this, the moon sign in Sagittarius, that's only going to exacerbate that. And it might actually make you less hypersensitive um, because all fire signs are, I think, seen as insensitive as it is, you know, fire energy, masculine energy is not going to be, uh, it's going to be like blunt force. Okay. 
and it's not going to be something that is, um, or just blunt, you know, people being a, a sun and Sagittarian myself, Sagittarius myself, I know that I have always been very straightforward and, and just saying things. And I've had to, in recent years, really dial that back and not be as in your face, although sometimes I am still like that. But, um, cancer and other signs recoil at things like that because the raw truth can sometimes feel very um, hurtful and you like all the uh, like the other two water signs but really Scorpio is a little bit different like Pisces you are um, vulnerable and the trick is to allow yourself to be vulnerable and to let other people see your vulnerability without having it turn into martyrdom or uh, some sort of um, guilting uh, manipulation. With this, the moon and Sag, the emotions are more straightforward, and that's a good thing because I think it will lessen the likelihood of being tempted to um, manipulate because manipulation is not honest uh, action. It's trying to get one's needs met, met through coercive measures, even if it's on the emotional level, it's still, there's a still form of coercion. And I think that this combination is less likely to go there. So in that sense, it can be healthy. Um, this is a, an in conjunction. These two signs are 150 degrees apart. Now, whether that's true for you officially or not depends on your particular chart and the degree between those two signs. If it's in within 10 or 12 degrees, the sun and moon of each other, then it will be an in conjunction. But you have to check... Um, what the, what the uh, chart generator says. And, um, but either way, uh, they are disparate elements, water and uh, fire. They say that water puts out fire. And what that means is that, um, you know, like if you're talking about two signs and one is a water sign and one is a fire sign, the water sign person can um, dampen the uh, the passion or fire of the of the fire sign, and they say. Then I then somebody I think wrote on my YouTube channel, and fire creates steam uh, when it's applied to water, and I thought that was hilarious. Like it, you know, kind of angers water, and that makes sense too. Um, and so both of these, these kinds of actions are things that are kind of aggressive and inharmonious, but there are, there are things that could be common ground that make you more unified with your sun and moon, like spiritual, maybe um, spiritual interests, healing modalities that are, are of interest to you or that you perform yourself, an interest in learning. I think of cancer as a teacher, but I also think of Sag as a teacher. So this combination is perfect for that. Uh, as I mentioned with the other video, history is a big cancer pet interest. So that might be um, where you go with that. But um, I think in relationships, you may be attracted to uh, people who are very um, self-expressive or creative um, look to your Venus and Mars for greater clarity on that uh, because um, being a Cancer, you may have Venus and or Mars in Leo and that's a fire sign as well. And that could seal the deal, if you will. And you just are really... 
uh, attracted to those kinds of people. And if that's the case, it can be kind of frustrating because you may find that, and, and by the way, this can also apply on the other side, um, to, well, I don't think you could, you could have Mars in, in um, Aries, but I don't know, I don't think you could have Venus in Aries. So, um, but, you know, Mars in Aries is good enough. And the reason it can be frustrating is because this type of person may be seen by you as unstable. Uh, fire is unstable because it's um, ex so expansive and it's just moving around a lot. And so you may feel like you are parenting that partner. You may feel that they are too spontaneous or too rash, you know, that they don't save money like you do, that they're like a, kind of a spendthrift. There's so many things, but you might have a little bit of that too with the moon in Sagittarius. Usually cancers are very fiscally conservative. Um, I didn't call you cheapskate. I just said fiscally conservative. But um, anyway, I think I'll leave it there. I hope that this resonated with you. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.